Hey, everybody. Hey, I guess we're live. <laughs> and here we are at, uh, at the Crack Track at YouTube. And along with David, whom you obviously see on screen, uh, we're going to watch the semi-final at Isma Link between Maxim Cressy and Oscar Ota. Uh, maybe we should start by introducing the players. Yeah. Uh, whom do you want to uh, wanna choose? Uh... I'll, I'll give you the, the right to decide. Oh, man. See, I'm terrible at making decisions. Okay. I, since... I'll, I'll choose Oscar Ate. Is that okay? Sure. So Oscar Ate, you might know him from his slam qualifying performances this year. Um, he won, I want to say like nine slam qualities matches in a row. Um, and at the U S open, it was, uh, I think it was like all three, three setters at the end of one of them. He was like throwing off or something. Two of them, I think. Yeah. The, the first two rounds, Olivo and, and someone else. Yeah. Zapata Morales was in not uh, had a close match. That's his claim to fame. And he also he beat uh, Rinderneck at Wimbledon. Um, he gave Andy Murray a very close match at Wimbledon, where a lot of non hardcore fans were introduced to him probably during that match. And this week in Ispening, it's been an interesting week for him. Um, maybe not as easy as um, he would have hoped, but he beat Robin Hase, who's a deceptively, he might be 230 in the world, but Hase put, can play at a much higher level than that. He came from a set down in that match. He then beat Julian Lenz, who has a bigger game. He's not, he's okay. Uh, and then yesterday was a war against uh, Max Martyr. Uh, down, he went down a set and he was down 5-2 in the double mini breakdown in the final set tie break, and he won five points in a row to win it. Um, the interesting thing about his match yesterday and something to keep an eye on today is that he served 22 aces and 13 double faults. So it's kind of roulette tennis uh, in a way. Um, so that's Ate. You want to pick up on Cressy? Yeah. Uh, I guess on Ote, I can also add that he was broken just twice so far. Uh, once by Hasse and Marterer, so even despite these double faults, he's still going strong on serve, which you obviously expect on, on carpet. We now see the players uh, were no, not warming up yet, but they will be warming up in a sec. Uh, as for Cressy, obviously, he's, he's a 24-year-old American, a very distinctive game because he's a classic ser servant volleyer. Also, we expect a lot of double faults from him because he literally <laughs> goes for, the, for, for two first serves. Pretty much the only player that does it realistically out of out of the guys around 100 200 for 300 mm -hmm. uh he can actually you know with, with his style he can actually get away with it uh a guy who can lose to anyone and win against anyone and i think it's best yeah. represented by the fact that he defeated Karina busta at the us open almost uh almost beats schwartzman at indian wells but then again this is his 10th challenger this year and he never even went to a semi before uh, five of them were on clay, so obviously he's kind of, you know, uh, that's not exactly a surface that plays to his assets, but anyhow, you'd, clay quarter. Yeah, you'd expect more from him, right? Mm -hmm. And he, he made four, four challenger finals in his life and all indoors, so <laughs> that's also that's also a clear, gives you a clear idea of, of how uh, how he can utilize that, that sort of conditions, and he was the runner-up here two years ago but lost very soundly to, to Lukasz Laczko. He also finished runner-up in doubles in his money two years ago, so he, he clearly likes the conditions here. And as for his road there uh, to, to, the, you know, to the semis, carpet just gives you so many uh, tight matches that it's not really yeah. unexpected. That it was a 7-5 over Otto Virtanen in the decider, and yesterday a final set tiebreaker win against Kasper Zhuk. Mm -hmm. uh, he even out aced Otte by nine aces so far, seventy-one to sixty-two. So you know, you, you, we expect a lot of these short points on serve. Again, he was actually broken three times, so one more than Otte, but uh, all the breaks were to Otte Vitalen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he um, he, I the thing about Cressy, and you mentioned the fact that he hasn't, in terms of going deep in tournaments, he hasn't had a great year. A lot of the times in tight moments, that's when the double faults balls come in. That's where the wild, unforced errors that you just in the and maybe the not clear decision making. Have you noticed that too? Because for me, that's something that's stuck. Uh, 
Oh, definitely. So many of his losses, uh, you know, rely on that sort of. He played when he played Virtan in the in the second round. Even he led five three in the deciding set. Uh, it was I think 15-15 on his serve, and then he committed three double faults in his next four points. It's very natural and I mean human like that when when there's a lot of pressure hitting mm-hmm. that first serve the second time was it, it simply becomes that that service box is a lot smaller then yeah uh, actually maybe it is a, a sort of a question like whether serving out matches or sets should he try to be more conventional with his second serve tactics um it's a tough question because kind of his game is kind of what makes him what he is that where he puts that pressure on you where everything is coming fast and you have hardly any time to think. And if he, you know, and, and that in those big second serves kind of play into that a little bit. Um, so I, I would, it's hard to, I th- at times, you know, in the big moments, probably you should take a little off the second serve. Um, especially when you see how it's negative, how it's leading to choking. Um, Taking a little off the second serve, I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. Yeah, but he kind of needs that that power to perform the serve and volley, right? It, yeah, it's it's a style that is pretty much gone in in modern tennis because of the advancement of technology. And I mean, taking a little off is okay, but if he served second serves like normal, he'd probably be able to be forced to stay on the baseline, and that's not really where his assets are. In this meaning, it's everything is so fast um, yeah. that you really, this is, will be first strike tennis, about as first strike tennis as you can ever get um, in this match. Average rally length, two shots. Yeah. Since we're on cracked rackets, we should also mention that Maxim Cressy is a, is a former college player. Mm. Uh, he was enrolled in UCLA. Uh, definitely someone who's going to make a successful career, although he's probably gonna to, gonna be limited by his own style. But that's who he is, and we we love him for it. I think I think he's one of the <laughs> most exciting players to watch on the Challenger Tour and and in tennis in general. And whether this match will be exciting, who knows? I mean, it depends on on the on the carpet surface how much in, how much we are actually going to see them playing and how much it's just going to be a serve and a missed return. What's your prediction? Do you have a prediction? I am a little surprised to see that Ote is the bookie's favorite. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I don't know. The, the surface just works so well for Cressy, but then again, it's all going to be very tight about yeah. who takes that one break point per set or yeah. something like that. Ote leads the head to head one to uh, one zero. Uh, but that was on on clay in Prague this year. Actually, the only the only quarterfinal Cressy has made be, besides uh, here in this morning. I'm you know yesterday Ate looked a touch injured to me at times. Um, like he didn't look a hundred percent on carpet. It probably doesn't matter because you're not playing those physical points. But he just looked maybe slightly off yesterday. It'll be interesting to see. Um, and here we go. Here we go. By the way, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and an ace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're gonna see a lot well, first serve percentage because of how much they double fall first serve percentage is gonna be important I think sure yeah a good serve plus one no yeah, that's gonna be a lot <laughs> really quick games like a free setters on carpets they like, take like two hours Automatter was two hours and five minutes I think yeah. and for a carpet match that's really long Andy Murray uh, plays a set in two hours, right? <laughs> yeah. Another ace. I would say the over-under for aces is probably going to be like 35. <laughs> yeah. What, cool. what do you know? What, what a breeze. Oh, no. Oh, it looked See the, okay. Enough. I'll tell you what. Yesterday in Ispening, line calling was an issue. It was uh, well in the Ate match yesterday, at least. Um, there was at least there was one call that was the ball was like at least an inch wide, and they called it in. Um, you could clearly see on the stream. It'll be interesting to see if there's line issues today. Um, there's the first double fall.
there's the game for Otto <laughs> very quick again. Uh, I, honestly, I, I've seen a lot of instances this week where line calling was an issue in this morning. Uh, there was that uh, Juk Seppi match as well. Mm -hmm. uh, later in the decider, Seppi had a lot of like he wasn't always right, at least according to the stream, because of, obviously the perspective is kind of weird. But uh, there was one point where he argued, no, no, you know, it wasn't necessary. I think I think Juk's shot was really in. But in general, I think the the line judges in this morning have a very tough time with all yeah. these big serves coming at you. Uh, I would much rather be uh, judging, uh, you know, umpiring at at the clay court event. Yeah. Uh... Although that's always funny when they're pointing at different marks and it's just a mess there. But yeah, no, I agree. And I think we sometimes get spoiled by Hawkeye Live and Fox 10. All right. Uh, let's see if we get a two aces in this game, three. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, he re he really is going to need to need to be clean on these on these servant volleys. This is I feel like Cressy is you know he he relies so much on the volleying, but it tends to break down a fair bit sometimes. Again, under pressure. Yeah, it's that was a great pass, backhand pass. Though. Oh, definitely. Yeah. This is a big second serve already. It's a shame we don't have a speed gun here. <laughs> it would be easy to point out the bear, that there's barely any difference between Cressy's first and second, but Otto is certainly going to feel that. You can see that, that Cressy's already targeting that Otto backhand. Is that a, a great idea? Like when you when you approach against Oscar Otto, do you always go to his backhand? Or, or I don't feel like it's that super important. Like I don't know to, to mix it up. I don't, I don't know. It's I think a lot of players' see. instincts are just to go to the backhand. Oh, sure, yeah. At least that's my instinct. Right? <laughs> it's tough against lefties, right? Because then all of a sudden that, that's normal. Yeah, you play your life against uh, all your life against righties, and then. Your, your game is kind of built around that, yeah. Woo. We've got a point. That was probably a long rally also. Cressy counting that. Uh -huh. Skyhawk there. See, 30-30 in Ismaning, that's a chance on return. That is a big chance. Yeah, you gotta go big on these returns. Just try to keep it low and maybe Cressy somehow falters. He might double fall. Yeah. Or that. <laughs> yeah, or you're not gonna even get it. you're barely gonna get a racket on the on the ball. That's just written in the in the basics of the surface and also in playing against Cressy. It's not like on surf, uh, on, on clay, his surf is been hurting. It's just tougher to serve and volley. If I'm Oscar Ate, that's a good first return game though. You got a couple points, get in a read on the Cressy serve. Yeah, lots of surf to, surfs to the backhand. Maybe he, he really wants to go there. But just looking at Otte's strokes, like I, I think maybe it's going to be tougher for him to pass from the forehand because it has such a long windup. Mm -hmm. but... Out, probably. Yeah. That's a good return uh, there.
That's a missed opportunity. Oh, definitely, yeah. That, that's that's a slice you just cannot miss at, at love 15. That serve was close. That's second. That, that good place. Yeah, I think so far they're under on the on the double folds, right? Before starting, we, we we sort of were talking about what the over under on double folds would be in this match. Let's wait for it to get tight. I think when it gets tight, that's when uh, the double fall. Oh, oh, yeah. The jinx. Oh, actually, the, is the, uh, yeah, it's the second one. The, that's first one was in the game. Uh, the first game when, when we fought, it was an ace. Okay, yeah, I, I forgot about it. That was a classic jinx right there. <laughs> We're really good at it. Uh, you're probably even better than me looking at how it goes on Twitter. Yeah, I... Um, Ate fans can feel good because I predicted Cressy to win this. I, almost, almost. That's what you were saying about being aggressive with the returns. That's what he needs to do. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the players who are going far that far here uh, do that. They, they're, they're very aggressive in return. Uh, Juk, Alice, Lachko to an extent. And Ooh, that return. That, yeah. that was close to a double, too. He's putting that ball right on the back line. It was a good return there. If you're That's Ate, right. do you go big here or do you take a little off the burst? I would take a little off, but I'm not such a huge server, you know. <laughs> and he, so, uh, I don't know how, how it would be to, to be in uh, Oscar Ote's skin. Oh, man. Same idea going big on the return. It's missing wide twice now. Yeah, we also had a, our first comment in the meantime uh, oh, really? from, from John Reed who says, great stuff, guys. We need more Challenger content. Hello, John. Hey, John. That's what we're planning to bring you. This is good stuff. I just, you know, not a lot of people know about it. Or, or people, you know, they hear John McEnroe say, oh, this unknown journeyman who picked up a tennis racket yesterday <laughs> And stands at the side of the road with a change, <laughs> asking for change. That's what he makes it seem like, even though this is high quality, great tennis. Outs, yeah. Maybe maybe Johnny Mack would feel about it differently had he come through uh, the challenger through himself, but he was such a prodigy from, from a young age and never really got that through that level. Also, it was established in 1978, so right around the time he was be actually becoming a top player. We know uh, Djokovic has that uh, has that challenger experience because he's in that every, every one of those commercials. Yes. I mean, every every single top 100 player besides Milos Raonic has a challenger title, and even Raonic has a has a final. I can't remember if it's Grand B, some challenger, a uh, Canadian challenger in 2010. It looks like it says remaining meeting time 9:43. Come again? Is it? Oh, nice? that's not good. That is not good. <laughs> That is not good. We should try to message Alex. Hopefully, you're not going to get taken down at 9.30. <laughs> okay, yeah. He, he says he sees it. Uh, so, he was listening. Uh, <laughs> and, hey, Alex. Yeah. If you're there. So, hopefully, the, the, we're going to try to fix the issue and not get taken down. If we get taken down, we're going to come back straight to you. So, don't, don't no worries. Um, yeah, so we're out there, auto leads to one. I think maybe this is a, a good moment to ask you uh, it, do you enjoy carpet as a novelty? And is it, is it somehow tiring, that version of tennis? And would you like to have it more? 
So I think nowadays there's all this talk about surface homogenization or however yep. you pronounce it um, and how all the surfaces are starting to play like one another. So for Ismaning in the next week, Ekintal, um, apologies if I, is it Ekintal or Ek, Ekintal? Yeah. I can tell. Um, those are our two carpet tournaments. And so I think it brings some nice variety. And I think it's just a nice, not it's a, it's nice to have a little different. I wish there was one or two ATP and WTA tournaments that are still on carpet. Um, and I, but I think it's nice. I wouldn't want to watch this every week. Um, like I could watch a clay court tournament every week, um, but I couldn't probably do it with carpet just because I like longer rallies. But as something interesting, you know, just watching a Cressy navigate carpet, I think is interesting to me. What about you? What do you think? Yeah, I believe it was also taken off the ATP tour because of some injury concerns, like the, the you know, that it was slippery and then made for more injuries. Countries, my country speak about that. I have never really played on carpet. I played on some very fast indoor hardcores, but 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 yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much the same. Uh, there was also back in 2019, there was also an Asian carpet event, Kaosyung, mm-hmm. um, I think. John Milman, oh, right, which is right. which is just just super weird, <laughs> but anyhow, it would be nice. Obviously, now now we don't really have an Asian. Ah, that's a proof. And the WTA, I think, had a carpet tournament more recently. Maybe yes, it wasn't completely off the ATP tour. It was like 2018 or something like that. Yes. Yeah, um, but yeah, just you know, for some variety because it is. T- True. I mean, we're hearing already that Paris is slow and we're going to get these slow hardcore tournaments, you know, so it's nice to have an alternative. Actually, Quebec was uh, uh, a tournament in Quebec City in 2018 was was a carpet one. I think was that where uh, that was one of those tournaments? I think that was the Luchas, Luchas Baroni's tournament or something. Uh, that was a fast fast one that was a fast tournament i remember i didn't remember if it was carpet or indoor hard but yeah that makes sense that it was carpet okay. so now i'm pretty sure it could just burn one yeah she did one she did one in, in quebec in 2014 yes that's the version i was uh thinking uh but she's a power player right in power oh, definitely yeah. do well on carpet um you would not, I don't think Carbias Baena would be, he, is heading to uh, Ekintal next week. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we, most of these players, like, uh, there wasn't, Carbias Baena wasn't in this money, obviously, but most of the players like that didn't do well if they played this week. Most of them, obviously. I, I was kind of surprised to see Jordan Thompson, but then again, I mean, he's good on grass. Yeah, and he, he didn't do so hot, you know, especially relative to his ranking. Um it's yeah, top it third players idea. like that. I heard that Thompson, I think, was complaining about the court again, or so he was making some complaints. He's uh, always complaining about, about something. It's like the boy who cried wolf with him. You eventually just start tuning him out. Yeah, looking at the at the field, I mean, Seppi is probably the least aggressive player out of these, but then again, he's obviously still very good in faster surfaces. And just he's his- such an experienced player he can navigate anything sure i do think all these indoor tournaments are nice in terms of we don't have weather delays um that was a big deal in bagota last week uh i think also in the art in buenos aires if i'm right yes because the yeah. Delhi match. Both, both events yeah what you did you see? Uh, it might have been late for you. Um, did you see Sarandolo Delian last night? Yeah, no, not not all of it. I, I had to go to bed a bit earlier because I had to get up uh, like at like nine today. But yeah, uh, I, I I did see a bit of that. They they also played in was it Buenos Aires? All these yeah. South American events just get mixed up for me. But yeah, the, the they just produced some <laughs> incredible clashes recently. It's just so many, both last week and this week, just so many swings and twists and turns. Delian, um, I believe, had he had a he had match points last week. He had set points in the first set today. I mean, yesterday he lost both. Um, he almost lost the second set, 
when he from a breakup. Um, it's just Sarandolo's mental toughness and ability to get point to get uh, balls deep in the court so consistently is just incredible to me. That with his lack, he's trying to be a little more aggressive on the forehand, but with his lack of power, the fact that he's able to do as, as well as he has is just incredible to me. Yeah, I, I read an interview of him that he where he said that he was definitely going to work on attacking options and serve in the in the near future. It, it, I mean, it's not like it's super intelligent that he that he got to that. Like, it's it's fairly obvious when you look at, when you look at his game, but it's so impressive that he's managing to be so good without actually you know having a, a very efficient way to win points. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, anyhow, we're, we're at free doing autocracy. Now that I'm thinking of it, maybe it wasn't the perfect choice <laughs> for our uh, for our tryout because it's quite hard to actually you know talk about something in the, in in the game here because I mean it's mostly been serves. Yeah, it it'll be interesting to see when things get tight. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's when these surfaces. Well, that's like when an Isner, right? the, the, if, if Isner and Opelka are playing, it's going to be the tie break. That's interesting. So I guess we're kind of just waiting for, or, you know, there was a break point. Cressy had a break point. Um, yeah. so I'll give him that. But yeah, no, it's going to be a lot of serve forehand. Yeah, that was the, the second serve forehand return that he missed, right? Yeah, you know, it's... Sort of I, a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah. He just, I mean, it's top on carpet. To, so I, you know, a second serve on carpet's probably like a first serve other places. But yeah, no, he missed opportunity for sure. I would love to see a Diego Schwartzman play here or I don't know, Sebastian Baez. Just <laughs> wonder how they would yeah. do it. Schwartzman, I you know if Cressy were playing Schwartzman today, I actually think he'd have a better chance to win than if he's playing out there. You know? I guess Otte, yeah, sure. I'd second that. And like you were saying, I don't know if the stream was on or not. Um, that Schwartzman and Cressy played at Indian Wells, um, and he was a point away from winning, even on slow, hard court. I remember I stopped following that one. I thought it was over. And then and during, I looked later, like, wait, what? Yeah, and that was also when the mental fragility of his showed because he committed a double fault on one of the match points. Can't really remember the, the other one, but, but that was one of the matches that we mentioned earlier where, where he just had the chance to close it out, but couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, fitness is not going to be a much of a factor. Yeah, I think we can. Uh, stop. We've established that already. Yeah, but I, I and the clay because I watch. I would say out of all the challenger tennis I watch, I would say I enjoy the clay the most, and I watch the most clay. Um, and that's when fitness really can be an issue, especially in like a Sarundolo Delian type of match. Um, well, there, there is all about the fitness. One could argue. Honestly, if you're looking at the two ends of tennis.
Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's, it looks like we should be back up. Uh, we missed an auto service game where Cressy got to 30, got to 40, 30, 30. Uh, he actually had a couple of good deep returns, almost had a sort of a chance at 30, 30 when uh, Otta uh, hit a drop shot and, and Cressy chased it down, but couldn't put the, the response in the court. But right now we're we're still even, I mean, sort of even. Yeah, you know, it's it's all going to come down to those, you know, who's going to make the, on that 30-30 on that drop shot, you know, the player that gets that, uh, like Cressy dug that ball out, it was an inch or two wide. It's going to be who, the, who, who can find the line on a shot like that. That's going to be, you know, it's those little 30-30, on carpet's a huge opportunity. So it's just who can take advantage of the small opportunities that they're given. Yeah, we had a, another comment in the meantime, but it was from Alex to check our Twitter messages. So, uh, <laughs> so we're not going to reply to that. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's going to be another Challenger semi starting in about half an hour in Brest, but I think it starts stick. now, right? Yeah, but I think it was somehow delayed. Oh. I don't know if it's if it's the doubles final earlier. I, I will actually have oh, to check. Oh, that's that. the yeah. I actually have to check that. I, I... And if you're looking at the pro action right now, uh Alcaraz and Zverever on serve, and Fritz is in Straw Strooper in the third set with Fritz at the break point in the first point in the first game of the third. Oh, what do you think goal. about uh, Carlos Alcaraz? He was, you know, last year this time he was playing challengers. Yeah, and only on clay. Uh, but he was sort of always, I guess, expected to be better on faster surfaces with that attacking game. But I remember having my doubts for sure, uh, especially as there was just pretty much no sample size. Uh, and he's going to be the world number one. That's Oh, yeah, really? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> You know, it was in. I, I actually talked to Gil Gross about this on Twitter. Uh, Gil thinks he's going to be better on faster surfaces. I still believe, and you seem to think that too. And my, I still believe he's going to be a little better on slower surfaces. Although we think, I think he's going to be great on any surface. Um, yeah, that, that's more my my statement is more like that 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 he's going to be great on any. Uh, with all respect to Gil, I probably think he's a bit of you know recency bias there, maybe. Well, <laughs> Just... I think I think is with how aggressive he is with the forehand. Um, I think there's an argument there for sure. I personally just maybe it's because we. I maybe it's just because I'm like nostalgic for when he was playing clay court challengers, but. Um, yeah, I maybe we remember that... him playing on clay too 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 well. <laughs> I just yeah. think that um, the time that he, I think his his forehand just needs a little more time personally um, to really be effective. So that's why I think on clay it gives him that time to set up. It does require a bit, yeah. And we're back, we're back even then uh, for four. Cressy blasts a fifth ace. I think we haven't seen a Cressy double fault yet, which is oh, sort of man. unexpected. That next game, uh, Damien, it's going to be a quadruple double <laughs> Can they, yeah. that's the jinx the jinx is in I trust him I, I put my trust in Maxim Cressy to, to hold his serve in the next game it's interesting because there's been so many big points or like uh, short points yeah, but there's only I think they've combined for well now like eight aces which it seems like it's been more um at least to me. Ten aces now, yeah. And, uh, um, we also have another comment from, from John who says, uh, we're back, or let me look at read it again. We're back, let's go. Uh, thank you for being very active on the, on the chat. Yeah, we're back, and it looks like we shouldn't have any issues like that anymore. And if you have any comments, uh, questions, constructive criticism, we're all ears. Yep, we're just trying this out for the first time and we're absolutely open to any suggestions. If you want to bring up a talking point, we're happy to discuss it with you, of course. And another very quick game, but actually they've been playing for like 30 minutes, I think. 
<laughs> yeah, but they've had a couple. You know, maybe it's been honestly, a little more returning than I thought it would be. A break point already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ninety three percent of first serve points for Ota, and eighty five for Cressy. Yeah, it's very tough to get a break point when you're uh, when you're serving like that. It's incredible. Cressy even got to a break point, and he had a sh- real shot to win it too. Um, yeah, you mentioned uh, a first serve percentage earlier. Cressy has quite a bit uh, more, more, uh, you know, a, a, a better one than Ota at seventy, and Ota has fifty-five, but mm-hmm. hasn't really stopped him from, uh, you know, from, from winning his games easily. At least most of them, not the not the one where Cressy had a break point. Uh, one thing maybe to mention is that Otto actually has never really had that much success indoors, which is kind of surprising. Uh, all his eight finals were, were outdoors on the Challenger Tour. Also on carpet, he only played in Ekenthal historically, and uh, in four attempts, he never got past round two. So it's Wow, really why do you first. think that is? No clue, honestly. Uh, Ekenthal, I mean, that that that's probably small sample size but why he hasn't never why he has never made a, a final indoors that's that was quite surprising to me yeah his original breakthrough i remember was on was in china and the clay mm-hmm. um that's where he really a few years ago where he started to rise um he's really good on all surfaces though um hence if you look at his qualifying for the majors you can see that he's done well you know he's done well on all the different three straight in a row right clay grass yeah. and hard so okay i thought he was never going to get that volley back but could he actually let him in the point but it didn't matter so there's no quadruple. I mean, there still could be quadruple <laughs> double faults this game. It could, but it's possible. Uh, whenever I hear, I remember. It's I, I remember. You know, like you can see it occasionally. The quadruple double. Um, I remember uh, Misha Zverev in Canada did it a few years ago, and it was like a big deal on Twitter. I think. Oh, that's some very nice volleying. Uh, Fabio Fognini, I think, once ended the match like that. He he just hit quadruple double faults when he was trying to stay in the, uh, what, against the panic, maybe? I, I can't remember. It was quite, quite a long while ago. It's so important when in such a serve-centric match to have your, to be in rhythm on this serve. You, once you lose that rhythm, that's, that's when you're in real trouble, especially in the tiebreak type scenario. You need to be making first serves and not giving your opponents any openings. Yeah, that's exactly what Maxim Cressy is doing so far. Yeah, but we haven't reached a tie. We talked at the beginning, the choking. You know, I he looks great until he doesn't. Um, so I'm still thinking we might see a couple doubles uh, in that tiebreak. That serve looked long, but okay. <laughs> oh, for me, it was in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> obviously, it's just a guess from from the streaming perspective. Even See, if you're if I, there, if I, I were playing, I'd call that in. Uh, I... Hmm. Again, something which you mentioned, like Ote's second serve is just constantly hitting the back of the service, you know, the, the service line. That one looked like it hit the back of the line too, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, in a, again, in a tie break, is he going to be able to have that precision? Or is that going to be doubles? That'll be interesting. Now some great volleying from Ote. Just that, that, that one set up and then just, just finishing off the weaker reply the depth on the on the first volley was the key it's a good serve uh, Cressy could have got yeah that's a return that Cressy could have got back though Yeah, and after the change over, Maxim Cressy is going to be tested for the first time.
94% for sure. That's just so wild. Now, Cressy's not the greatest returner, but still. Yeah, there's been a lot of stuff like that this week. Uh, they usually somewhat go down in the second and first set. I, I, I noticed maybe that's because the players are getting a better read. But the, I, I, I've seen a couple of these. One, I think it was maybe Rosenkrantz Marterer where or maybe Rosenkrantz uh, Wessler, when uh, after the first set, they were both on like 92, 93, and, and it dropped down massively later on. Speaking of Wessler, was it Ismaning or uh, Ekintala, where he played Batik? In yeah, Batik Isma- Vand- Ismaning. Yes, and amazing to see what Batik's done since then. He's in the semifinals of St. Petersburg right now, where... He's about to play um, as soon as the Fritz match finishes up. He's playing Myron Chilich today. It's amazing yeah, so that a year ago he was in, you know, this challenger. So many of us sort of make the point that it's very tough to break through to the maker and it's even hard, harder to stay there. And yet he seems like he's going to be perfectly comfortable. And this is a guy that only has one challenger to, uh, title in his life. Yeah. It's amazing, you know, especially nowadays um, with the rank or in the with the pandemic rank, ranking system that's just made it really tough. Uh, Holger Rune has talked about how frustrating it is that how hard it's been to move up. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, he calls one of his best achievements being a junior number one in yeah. three consecutive years, and he's only done that because of the ranking freeze. And he's got in plenty of wild cards. Oh, for sure, yeah. Which is quite interesting for a Danish player, right? You usually assume that wild cards are going to be received by the guys from America, from France, from uh, Great Britain, usually the, the slam hosting countries. Yeah. And this guy pretty much, you know, probably Muratogu Academy for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now it's pressure. 15 all second serve. What happens here? There it is. Yeah. Yep. I, I was actually about to say, I think he doubles here. And then I said, I'm going <laughs> to not in any double. Um, this is what can happen with Cressy. This is what we've been talking about. This is what can happen with Cressy. Things are fine until the end of sex. I think if he doesn't get his first serve in here, he's in big trouble. I don't, I could see another double. Another, another let. He said sorry to Ote or so. I, I don't know for what. That's a thing in tennis. Everyone's always apologizing, even though it's so fake, Dale. I mean, there was nothing to apologize here, uh, the, the, to, to apologize for. Oh, I won match point on a net cord. Sorry. <laughs> you are kind of sorry. At least I am when I do that. <laughs> yeah, I am. But if I was making a bunch of money oh. on that net cord, wow. Yeah. That's a return that could win him the set. Yeah. And, you know, that's what a double fall at 15 all, 15 30. That's, you know, you don't have room on carpet to be doing to have a double fall in that type of situation because then Ate is good enough that he can hit a backhand return like he just did. Yeah. Also on the stretch, like the, the passing shot that he had in the first game, sort of very, very similar move there. Out. Oh, so boy. There's going to be a lot of pressure on that second set now. Yep. Yep. You know, it, it's exactly the way we kind of were talking about Cressy. 
Yeah, we were talking just exactly about that, but his serve works, his tactic of serving, you know, to twice his first serve he is working great. And then the end of the set or the end of the match comes. And it's not like we're some sort of, you know, great predictors or whatever. <laughs> it's just it's just what happens in Cressy's matches. Uh, and you can kind of uh, expect that at some point, although obviously he has his days. Yeah, and so it'll be, you know... It'll be interesting to see, especially with how well Ate is serving. That's you just have no room for that. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles the second set. If if you know, because I'm assuming he'll hold easily till the pressure moments. You know, if does he take a little off? Um, it is in, it is um, important to note that he was down a set to Casper Zuk. He uh, he went to three sets with uh, Otto Vertinen. Um, so he's played a couple three setters, but none uh, none none against the player the quality of Ate. Uh, the, you know, we're we're talking about two players who have never been in the top one hundred. If if you were to give like a percentage estimation of their chances to to get there in their in their careers, what would it be? For Cressy? For Cressy and for Otto later. Um, yeah. I would say... Okay, let me see exactly where they are in the rankings right now. Cressy is 141st, and it's his actually, actually his peak. And Otto is like six spots behind his peak, which is 129. I would say Ate is a better shot um, oh. than Cressy. Even despite I, the four years of, of difference? I, you know, I just think that his... Oh man, yeah, you're right. Uh, you, I think they both make it. How about that? At some cool. point. Cool. What do you think? I am. I am more certain about Cressy. I think. Like, I would be honestly surprised if he never did. Yeah, just because he has to schedule right. I think it's so important that he schedules. Right. Okay. Well, he, you know, the way he performs against high ranked players, simply like. Yeah, he definitely has a game. He has a higher upside for sure, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the way you make huge leaps in the rankings, at least to me, is either a deep run at a big event or just winning you know, numerous titles over a couple of months. And for Cressy, it's most likely going to be a, a deep run at a, at a big event because he's simply never going to have that consistency, but he can beat anyone. Oh, and that's a great forehand return. Whereas with Ate, with his more, you know, uh, he can bring it to all the surf, he's gained all the surfaces, he's more steady. Um, that's, he might have a better shot doing what you said in terms of winning consistent mm -hmm. tournaments to get there. Agreed. But then again, this year hasn't really, he hasn't really shown that, I think. Uh, as you mentioned, free slam qualifying is completed. But then again, at Challengers, it's been pretty much a couple of good results. The yeah. final in Prague, then Alicante semis last week or two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think. And then this. You expect more out of him for sure. And look at this. Yep. A great chip and charge from Cressy and we get two, two break points for the American. I would say these are two, even though Cressy just got broken, I would say these are two set points. Set points. <laughs> <laughs> First game. <laughs> Okay, this is his chance. Second serve. Does he go big again on the return? Doesn't matter. Oh, well, that was in. Yeah, that was again just the back of the service line. It's not as easy as it looks, folks, <laughs> to keep hitting the back of the line. Yeah, I wonder how much he actually wants to go for the death and how much this is just, you know, just hitting a strong uh, a strong serve. And if you're Cressy, you can't get upset with yourself at that. I mean, there's nothing he can do there. It hit the back of the line, coming fast, getting on garbage. All right. Let's see. And another yeah. beautiful chip and charge, yeah. 
I, I thought that that slice could have been just a bit too floaty, but it was deep enough so that it didn't really matter. Yeah. And you were saying that with Ate too, how the death of his Bali um, earlier was so important. Death on carpet is definitely going to be bigger, maybe, than it's mm-hmm. going to be big. Yeah. If, if it's a short ball, everyone is just going to finish it. And here the depth just made, made Cressy win that point. And again, maybe maybe that's a little longer wind up on, on Otis' serve. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, forehand didn't really allow him to, to pass that effectively. We see how, well, maybe not anymore, but Dominic team was, uh, very, was very weak at passing shots up until some point in time, just because he had these very long wind ups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John said, yeah, Mr. Uh, Wildcard himself, lol, which I'm assuming he, he's talking about when he, uh, when we mentioned Holger Rune. Either him or Andy Murray, right? <laughs> yeah, and he also said he, uh, Rune said he's never, not usually one to complain or something like that in one of his <laughs> Instagram posts, which is obviously just dead wrong. If you, <laughs> if someone watched like a couple of matches of Rune, he, then, then, then he knows that, that the guy complains about literally everything. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, Rune is uh, maybe a little uh, full of himself, but at the same time, I never would have expected him to have the season that he's had. Um, He's had a great year, even though he's burnt out now. Super impressive season. Yeah, it, and it was all about going down a level a bit because it, but at the beginning of 2020, he got these wildcards to ATP qualities, to challengers, was mm-hmm. never even winning a match. And then after the pandemic, uh, he came back to play the ITF tour and just rose up almost instantly. Mm-hmm. Cressy up to nine aces now. Ten or or if or is that going to be an unreturned serve? Simply no, it's the, it's going to be an ace. I wasn't sure if Ota caught that or not, but apparently not. Yeah. So as you said, this was uh, the the set point was already played. Now we're just <laughs> we're just gonna go, go for a break. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm joking. We're gonna stay here, but. Uh, it's it's likely that this set is that this set is done and dusted. Obviously, it's not it's not late enough in the set for Otto to try to tank it or whatever. There's there's still a lot of tennis to be played. I'm not worried about Cressy holding until five four. Yeah, that's actually, and I'm being like completely serious there. That's when I'd get worried because that's when he tends to tighten up. But this is a great chance for Cressy to really try to work out, okay, for the third set, what, is, what can I do to make return? Yeah, what can, what can I pull that makes Ate uncomfortable? And that's the kind of returns that can do it. Uh, that was a second serve that Ote, I mean, in general, he, he doesn't go for it as much as Cressy. And we've, seen, or we've already seen a couple of these fantastic returns from Cressy. That is probably out, but but I mean he's he's really going for it, and it's it's the right tactic, especially once he's up a break. Yeah. So, I have a question for you. Do you think? Do you think in the other semi in this meeting, do you think Lucas Lach- Lachko uh, continues his run, or is or is he done today? Oh, let me see. Okay, uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Lachko is so weird this season. Like he honestly, he never he played atrocious tennis for the most part. I think even he wouldn't be mad at me for this wording there. <laughs> and then he suddenly went out and won that that challenger in 
Yeah, uh, over Uchiyama, I can't remember this a Spanish uh, Spanish. I think city, it might right? be it might have been Mallorca. Maybe Mallorca. Yes, I think it was Mallorca indeed. And 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 then he comes here. Oh, wait, hold on a is... second. I sorry, that serve was in. <laughs> I thought. Did you see that? I I will try to rewind it and, and see, but it looked uh, into me. Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting. I just had no, 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 no worries. I I should have been looking at that point. I I sort of got <laughs> you know got in the rhythm of talking. I'm sorry. I am so sorry for interrupting. It was in for sure. Like like this was an ace, just. It's fair and square. Uh, oh, but that's a great point from Cressy. And there's yeah. going to be another chance. And this is a set point. Like, yeah, you know, two games before we were we were sort of wondering about it, whether it could be a set point. But and this is a set point. So, yeah, you were talking about Latsko in Mallorca. Yeah. I mean, it, he just randomly comes out of nowhere and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> That also was out. Oh Jesus! I I can't. We, um, we would be such bad empires. Um, empires. I feel like it must be easier from their vantage point um, up there in a little elevation close to the court. Yeah, and and Cressy goes up a double break. He wins the very rare long baseline rally uh, on this backhand. Just didn't really work there. Uh, this is, yeah, mm -hmm. this is where uh, I think Ate does tank this at. Oh, very possible. Yeah, Ate is kind of you know I wouldn't say known for it, but he, he you know he just happens to do that sometimes. Uh, there's been uh, like a against Foreit or Lechechka, one of the young checks this year, where he just completely tanked the second set and then then won. And as for as for Lachko coming back to that, I mean he's sort of like a carpet specialist. <laughs> Yeah, if you, if you could say that, obviously he only has one uh, one challenger event uh, in his career, but he won in this money in 2019, and uh, I don't know. Again, it's gonna be about the very few points here or there. In general, mm -hmm. I I think Quentin is is playing very well recently, but he also mm -hmm. seems to have these mental struggles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, would probably agree with Alice being the favorite there, but but Lachko is definitely not without a chance. Yeah, Lachko, I believe he won three Carpet Futures events, too. Um, oh. At least two. I, mean, I think it was three. Um, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, Austria 2006 and two in Russia 2009, yeah. So, I mean, he's definitely comfortable. But, yeah, Luis has that huge serve. Um, but like Cressy, like Ate, double faults can be a problem. Oh, definitely. He 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 had three three setters here, and it was for a reason. Yeah, I thought for for check uh, had it yesterday. I thought he was going to win. Um, good effort by Elise. This is a guy who could easily get to the top one hundred too, as well, right? Quentin. Quentin. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. He was like 102 and back back five years five years ago or something. I remember back when he was uh, playing. I be, he beat uh, Francis Tiapo in uh, one of the green clay challengers in the U.S. And I just remember being so impressed with his control aggression and his serve and his serve. Um, and I thought he was going to be destined for big things. And then he kind of stalled a little bit. Do you remember that? Uh, I mean, the, the match itself, not really. I remember being exposed to Alice when he qualified for the Eastern Open and played Djokovic. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember if it was 2017 or 2016, something like that. But yeah, he definitely looked like someone who could, who could have a big future in the sport. And, and he did stall after that. Uh, also, the, the Junior Grand Slam final, uh, what was it, 2014, I think, the, the US Open. So someone who has showed a lot of premise early, but yeah, mm -hmm. the, 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 the challenger you mentioned was in Tallahassee. Yes. 2016. Yeah. That was back when Francis was still, I think, trying to win his first challenger. I've been following Francis Tiapo. Um, so seeing his success this week, I've been following him for a long, long time. Um, back. Uh, remember his first challenger final against Facundo Arguello. Um, 
he's been in heat for a long time. He couldn't win that first. Uh, it was, he struggled in finals, um, for the beginning of his career. Uh, anyways, it was great to see him win that first one in Canada. I think it was. And now he's doing great on the eight. Look, he's had a great for Tiafo has had a very nice, at least second half of the season. Yes, second half from 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 the grass, right? Somewhere around Nottingham Challenger. That was yeah, and that then was he when beat, it started. Then he beat Sipsy Pass. Um, he, well, the first time. <laughs> yep, Sipsy Pass and Wimbledon. Yeah, he's been like a top twenty player for the past couple of months, even though he didn't. He have a a semi before Vienna, so he, it was more a couple rounds here or there. But he he's been playing really great stuff. That's a oh was that out? That because I was about to say that's it was, a great it was, return. Yeah. Oh, that was in. That was in. Ah, uh, oh, sorry. I was thinking you were talking about the serve. It looks like I'm a couple of seconds behind. Oh, okay. I'll be quiet for a couple. <laughs> no, of... no, no, no worries. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll try to I'll try to refresh the page. Hey, at least the stream hasn't went down yet, right? That's been a problem lately. Yeah, for a challenger match, we're doing really well on that, in that aspect. Oh, that's a great love. And Otto is so far seems very motivated and pumped despite despite being down to breaks to Maxim Cressy on the carpet court. Yeah, he's. He, they're both looking engaged mentally, which is not a given at this time in the season. And it is not a given in the case of these two players. Obviously, Ota more than, than Cressy and Cressy, but they both have some sort of motivational issues sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm looking at Francis Tiafoe's challenger finals. <laughs> I remember he lost to Escobedo. He lost to, at the beginning of his career, he lost to Arguello, Elise. Um, and then he finally, I think it was, he beat uh, Ar- Arevalo in Canada. In Canada. Yep. That was the first. Grand BS. He lost five, his first five and then won six in a row. Yeah. He, and then he, he won Delray, won. right, at some point. And there are yes, 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 against uh, Goyovchik, right? Yeah, and then he had his big slam breakthrough. I think it was in 2019 where he made the Australia, this yeah. Yeah, so I've been a long time Diapo fan. That's what the great thing about challengers is, is you get to see these guys work their way up the ladder, and that's really why I love it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We haven't really, you know, because of our age, we haven't really had an option to really follow a full career of a player yet. Like mm-hmm. the guys, the guys that are, oh, that's another fantastic love from Otto. Amazing, uh, that, that That's really, he's really great at that. He, we, we saw it at Wimbledon as well. But anyhow, what else I was, what was I even talking about? I, I got uh, lost because career. of that love. Ah, uh, yeah, that that's, uh, we pretty much haven't really seen a player you know, just f- progress from juniors and then finish his career. The guys who are finishing their careers right now are people who are already on the scene when I was starting to watch. I'm assuming it's the same for you as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it, although I feel like, like, for instance, like with the big three and the Williams sisters, we've been watching, you know, even though we didn't maybe weren't seeing them back in, you know, 2003, um, we were we still seen them for a long time it almost feels like we've watched them for a lot of their careers yeah not this time with the lob yeah (laughs) that was far too short that's a type that lob is the type of thing in the tie break that can turn that can win the match for him in a tight match, that's the type of thing. Get the mini break. What do you think about the orange cork color? 
mean, you can see the ball well, at least to me. Like I, I I'm sitting very close to the TV, so maybe that <laughs> helps. But uh, but in general, I feel like I can I can see it well, so I don't really mind. Again, variety is nice. Like mm-hmm. even even in this. One of the Spain uh, clay court tournaments has yeah. yellow, basically yellow. Clay. That's a tough one to watch. I agree. Uh, from the stream, you cannot really see the ball. Well, I've heard that live, it's cool. I actually love the blue clay in Madrid. I wish they, I wish they kept it. Yeah, me too. But uh, you know, obviously just one event and you know, the sort of slippery quality that it had. You can really see it in the movement when you watch the, the highlights or the replays that uh, the players really struggle to change directions. And... and 5-1. So there's there might not be that game at 5-4 that you were, <laughs> that yeah. you were kind of afraid of, yeah. Cressy is safe for now. Even despite getting broken twice, Ote is still 91% in first serve points one. Just crazy. Now, this is actually, I think, a big game because if I'm Cressy, knowing his tendency to choke, um, serving you first, serve first. Mm-hmm. and the third is going to be big. Nothing you can do, though. Yeah, sometimes you just have to live with what the opponent gave you. And actually, Ota is down to 45% on his first serve. So that might be one of the reasons why we've seen 44 now. Uh, that might be one of the reasons why we've seen him getting broken twice this in this match. Oh, that's... Yeah, I mean especially on carpet where it's so important to be on top of the point right from the beginning, you gotta ha- be landing more reserves. Yeah. That's maybe also around the time where he can sort of start, you know, thinking about lowering that serve speed a bit just to make it go in. But based on what I saw yesterday from him, I don't necessarily think, Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to be making many adjustments because he, he, okay. he was doing his thing yesterday, no matter, you know, come hell or high water. Yeah, so if Cressy holds, then Ota is going to start the first set. The set has been, it's almost over. It's been 23 minutes. Yeah, we're gonna have three sets, and it's gonna take like <laughs> not not two hours, uh, probably. It's an hour and two minutes at this point. So, yeah, that's probably not gonna last more than two. Is that cool? I don't know. I mean, some some people say that tennis needs to be a little bit shorter. That the younger generations require a, a quicker product. Excuse maybe, maybe me while my years. eyes roll to the back to the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i also don't really agree with that but then again I, I i see i understand some arguments like the one that no one really except for hardcore fans actually watches a best of five match from start to finish yeah i guess what i think is what i more of a problem with is some of the innovations they've decided to try mm-hmm. to combat that, the fast five, the or whatever it's called, fast four, the, yeah. fast four, fast four, the the uh, no ad scoring bothers me. Match tie, match tie breaks kind of bother me a little bit. Um, a lot of what can cut down the time is having the player not have to go, not towel off after every. Those type of things uh, add up, like the toweling off and. I'm not going to get into bathroom breaks, but you know, bathroom breaks don't bother me as much as most, but there are ways that we can speed things up by needless injury timeouts. Then, you know, you see the tactical injury timeouts, that type of thing. Sure. I mean, tennis is in general a sport where compared to the whole match time, there's not much play 
mm-hmm. <laughs> when you when you have a match that lasts three hours if you if you cut it down to to just the sheer points it's gonna be like what one, one hour something like that yeah. there was a study like that recently i can't remember the exact numbers but uh i i i i agree that for casuals it might be a bit boring like the, the breaks between points they they need to exist but yeah. they, they're, they're just really long compared yeah. to how the action progresses in other sports yeah it's the same with american football um and i'll just plug michigan's playing michigan state <laughs> today uh big game for the wolverines um anyways i it's the same thing though where they where they did a study and it's like the actual time that the plays are going on versus the commercials and everything else is disproportionate to like the three hour, you know, football game and that it takes to play it with all the commercials and halftime and everything. So, yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think that, um, yeah, I don't know if there's a great solution because I don't think like no ad scoring, for instance, that one of the, my favorite things about tennis are the long deuce games no ad scoring just kind of makes it kind of almost like a shell of itself. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of like it in doubles because honestly, <laughs> doubles just gives me so much less wow. viewing pleasure than singles. I still enjoy it, but just knowing that the match will be sort of limited to a certain time is, is pretty cool. I like doubles more on slower surfaces where you get more of the rallies as opposed yeah. to it being like surf pad, like in Ispening or in uh or in like uh, St. Petersburg, you know, it's just gonna be big serve. Yeah, then- definitely definitely the case for me too. Uh I mean some people might know me as a big admirer of any volleyers, but volleying in doubles just isn't so pleasing for me as as watching someone volley in singles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Otto it seems to be going off to uh to the toilet or to a medical timeout we're gonna find out soon because he was actually grabbing his arm yeah i wonder if that's kind of the injury that we saw yesterday too uh i don't know what his deal was yesterday he was kind of i don't know Ate, i was kind of just mm-hmm. something looked off but i couldn't place what it was just a toilet break from what it seems. We, are we are we are we timing the toilet break uh <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't know we can i mean I, we can always rewind the stream and we're gonna see how how long it took but i just you know the whole discussion is just so pointless to me because i think there there will never be a fixed limit because you just cannot tell the player you can only spend three or four minutes in the toilet. What if he has some sort of, a, you know, a, a bigger issue, let's say. And, yeah. and, and, or, and, and do we what really Riley Opelka said. He uh-huh. said that it just takes like three to four minutes sometimes to get to the toilet. That's one thing, right? And then people want like six or seven minutes. The, the courts, uh, the distance from the courts to the bathroom is not universal across events, obviously. So that's another issue. And and sometimes you just really need the toilet. Some people are going to, uh, you know, to to use that rule uh, with not exactly uh, good intentions, but Mm -hmm. I just don't see how it's, how it would be fixed. Yeah. It's the same with the injury timeouts. It's it's, I'm like in breath either. I hate the tactical medical timeouts. It slows down the game. It bothers me, but I just can't think of a good solution. Yeah. You just can't eliminate them as a whole because the players need them and it's important to you know to keep them healthy and to keep up the quality of the of the match yeah i mean you know we should i guess we shouldn't be catering our rules to the astapenkos or your stremskas of the world oh but that was quick <laughs> yeah no? that was that was i mean i don't know oscar Otte. the toilet has to be really not far from there So you still, so you said before the match, Cressy, you thought would win, right? Yep. Do you still stand by that? In general, before carpet matches, I say that, you know, it's always about the one point here or there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's really, 
it's pretty much guessing at this point, although I guess he has the momentum. His aggressive returns have been going in a fair bit more, I guess. He's starting to get a read on the Ate serve, I feel like. Yeah. More and more chip and charges and more more uh, attacking returns. And that's, you know, that, that he, he can allow himself for that because he, he gets a better read, yeah. Really good serve there. I think Ate might use the same tennis racket I do. Maybe. So is it the racket or the arm that produces these huge serves? Uh, definitely not the racket because my serve sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, obviously. I mean, this is this is just very trivial. But in the in the in this set, it's so important to hold serve. Yeah, that they, that they're going to be just all, focusing all their efforts on on maintaining that. Yeah, and like you said before, it's going to come down to a point or two here and there. In, and I think also, as we mentioned earlier, can I, is Ate able to put first serves in consistently? I actually think the Ate backhand's been better than the forehand today for as much as Cressy's went that way. Yep. Uh, that's why I'm a little bit surprised that, that Cressy is targeting it a fair bit more on the forehand. But not, not, you know, no, no, it's not like 100% of his approaches go to the backhand. Yeah, we had uh, another comment from John who says we know uh, that he knows we're focused on this match, but an incredible comeback happening in Paris qualies from Marcos Giron, another guy who's managed to get to tour level and stay there the last few years. Yeah, and I think yeah, another UCLA player. Oh yes, actually yes. So so uh, Cressy's colleague. Maybe wow, gonna, uh, Simone was up. Call. Did you see huh? Simone was up five one five zero and then five one forty love, and it's five five. Really. Yeah. Ah, so it's not finished yet. Okay. From the comments, well, I, I I figured it was finished. So he was 5 1 40, 40 love up on Sir. Mental tennis is such a mental game. You know, once you get to that 40, even 40 from 40 love to 40 30, you start to get a little nervous. How does Gilles Simon have a protected ranking? Maybe you can explain that to me. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Um, I, he, he, was out, he was out for a while. Um, Two months was, or something. Was it with COVID or I can't remember? No, he, he said he was going to take a break of a couple of months. Oh, and then right. He may, but he actually cut it short. It definitely wasn't the six months that you need to, to get a protected ranking. The mental health break, I think, right? Yeah, sort of so, something like that, yes. He was just yeah. losing a lot and, and wasn't feeling right with himself, yeah. And it's tough for these players with the hotel bubble and uh, it's – and all the isolation, that constant COVID testing, um, not easy. You know, on the road by yourself, a lot of them, especially the Australian players, you know, can't even come home. With the bubbles, it's probably a bit easier on the Challenger Tour. <laughs> like yeah. the, the restrictions are definitely aren't as harsh as as in the big events, especially earlier. Like we had that US Open that was just so rigoristic and on the challenger tour everyone is just living sort of normal obviously the yeah. COVID testing oh here we go 30 all big point but yeah you know we saw with australia um with the australian open coming up there's already been a lot of controversy or should they do 14 day quarantine on vaccine i'm not going to offer any opinions on that but it's just it's definitely going to be a topic in the months to come because at least i've heard one player say i'm not doing a 14 day quarantine yeah and and john is saying that Niron is now serving at six five <laughs> that is incredible indeed yeah uh, we saw almost saw something similar happen with Tiafo yesterday. It was up five one in the second set against Schwartzman. Schwartzman got to six five, serving for the set, I believe. And then yeah, he, did, Tiafo, he did serve for the set. Yes, Tiafo won in the tiebreak. Tennis no lead safe unless it's carpet and you're up a double break. <laughs> But 
that is out probably, yeah. <laughs> That's a ballsy second serve. Yeah. Um, again, if he's serving four or five there, is that going in or is he yeah, but that wide? Count to think of it, I actually start. Uh, I actually like Cressy's chances more now because of how big he's been able to go on his returns. I feel mm -hmm. like Ota is never really putting that pressure on him. Yeah, Cressy definitely, I think, has a slightly better read on the Ota serve than vice versa. Yep. That was out. close to being long, too. Probably out to me, but I don't know. Let's. It was right next to the more. line, Judge, but I thought it looked a touch long, but it's hard to say on these quick courts. Yeah, it's, it, it's going to be very tough to tell from the stream. I would still stick to out, but... Do you think we'll see a day where challenge where the majority of town challenger tournaments have Hawkeye or Fox 10? Or is that never gonna happen? Do you I think? guess. I mean it can't be that uh, expensive, right? I, I'm not actually sure. But once you install it, it's gonna stay there. So maybe it's actually about the stability, like if if an indoor or maybe not indoors, like whatever, if a challenger event uh is certain that they're going to stay on the schedule for years then maybe they have more incentive to to buy it and right. we, we've we've seen the challenger schedule is a lot more a lot less fixed than mm -hmm. than the atp tour one uh there are some challengers with with uh, hokais right i i think i was in bratislava two years ago and yeah had a hokai uh some french or ones me. also Come again? What, what did you say? Orleans Challenger. Orleans, had yes, yes, yes. That, that was the one in France this year, yeah. Um, but yeah, for a tournament, I, there was that Italian tournament, indoor hard on gray courts earlier this year that had like five challengers in a row or something. Do you remember that? Biela, yeah, Biela, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, Four that, indoors, I think, and three clay later, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, that would have been, you know, an interesting, you know, if you have so many tournaments going on to get Hawkeye involved there. True. Sure. But then again, how many are they going to hold next year? I guess they, maybe maybe they know at this point, but but you, you can never really be sure. Yeah. Everything is so... Like, if I, I saw that Portugal was going to hold two Challenger events in this December this year. Oh, in, good. In Maya. I oh, mean, that's good. Good. For, me, for us, right? Because yeah. we get to watch it. Usually, then again, like, where is there going to be an off season? Who's gonna play there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, be, the players that wanted to play were gonna play the feature events anyway that happen year round. Um, yes, but, but I, mean, I agree. Some sort of an off season, some sort of a restart is sort of. I mean, it, it is it is important. Uh. I think both to a, to a viewer and to a player probably just get some sort of a, a you know we always talk about a player doing well this season or a player doing doing well this yeah. year. If they're just going to play constantly, then then that's all going to be distorted. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think we have the full calendar. I just saw the uh, the Maya Challenger or whatever the. Uh, the, the name of the, of, the, of the event is announcing that. Oh, actually, we have a, a calendar for the first two weeks of December now. And it's going to be four events Wow! Uh, in the That's... week starting December 6th and then two in the, in the week starting December 13th. So December 19th is going to be the last challenger of the year. December 9th? So it's going up to Christmas? Yeah. Pretty much. Wow. <laughs> so there's literally no off season this year. <laughs> I would say that probably for this December, it's going to be a lot of local, more local players. Um, you're not going to see like, uh, like uh, Cressy go to Europe in, you know, uh, December. 
for very possible i i remember i think cressy played the maya challenger right right but it was like a month earlier yeah so. well, i guess he might he's french originally so maybe he has family in france or something but for like an american for instance or like a european's not going to come to america uh for a december event i don't think yeah, the, the last event in the States will be Champagne November 15th, but there's going to be a lot of things in Europe and South America until the end of the year. Um, also yeah. Mexico uh, in November to the, November 22nd, Mexico, and November 22nd, there's a challenge in Bahrain, which is, uh, I think, a new one. I, I, That's I, a I new one, if... yeah. I don't yeah, recall. For me, the Mexico, the Mexico, the South American ones, that worked great for my time zone. Um, at the beginning yeah. of the year, when it was like only Istanbul, it was really tough on me to watch any of it because it was sure. so early in the morning. For me, pretty much the only one that doesn't work is Asian. Uh, states and, and South America are cool because they usually finish at like 2 or 3 a.m. So it's still still watchable. And then Almaty or, or Istanbul, it starts at about 8 or 9 a.m. for me. So it's basically just Asia that I can that I really cannot follow much. And lucky for you, there's been like hardly any. Yeah, <laughs> there's no tennis in Asia recently. This year, I think we had just what Istanbul doesn't really count because it's in Europe, sort of. I guess. Russian tournaments count? Yeah, not really. There was uh, a few in Kazakhstan, right? And I guess that's... Yeah. Nur I Sultan. guess that's all. Nur Sultan Almaty. Finally, misses a serve long. Yep. Not on the back lane. <laughs> Three double that. faults, and I think two were two were really a long time ago. It's amazing because, like we said, he's putting every one of his second serves on the back line. That hasn't happened more often. Yeah, his previous two were in the first set, so it's been a long while since he made a double fault. Really good serving. Yeah, I think we're going to see a third set breaker here. That's my prediction. Looking likely, yes. We are only seven service holds away. <laughs> So 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I mean, so far we've had uh, how many games? I need to count it. 25, right? And three, mm -hmm. three breaks. So even the, the odds are that we're going to get that breaker. But then again, you, we mentioned Cressy, you know, the mental aspect being so, so important in the quality of his serve. So maybe mm -hmm. once, once there's pressure on him, once there's that 4-5 yeah. or 5-6, that's where we're going to be scared yeah um, how about marcos giron because i don't think there was an update yes he could he took it seven five yeah you know it's amazing you once the momentum gets on your side in tennis it's hard to uh stop the train um, Jesus. in That's... paris qualities we're seeing arthur fields uh down down a breaker in the first set against uh Papyrin. I say Papyrin, yeah. yeah. What do you think about uh, Arthur's game? I love it. I mean, honestly, all the new young, young Frenchmen are so exciting. Fields, uh, and Pechi Pericard, uh, Van Asche. I mean, I, I love watching them. I'm mm -hmm. super excited to see how they fare uh, later. Fields, obviously, could be the one with the higher peak uh, yeah. because of that forehand, because of how... how, how you know the, the backhand is not a liability compared to Fetchy Berry card, for example, who mm -hmm. has that, that one hander that will be an issue. And Fields can can go far with that combination of, of forehand and a very workable serve. Although yeah, you know, it, it, I just mentioned um, that comparison to Fetchy Berry card, that, that guy has a huge serve. Yeah. But, but in general, these these three guys are could be uh, could be huge. And then there's the uh college player chick. I can't pronounce his name. Chick. Uh... Clement Schideck? Yes. Clement Schideck, Clement Schideck, probably. Yeah, there, there are a couple of these uh, college guys, like uh, Cornel Chauvin or whatever, however it's read. 
he also enrolled into college. Mm -hmm. um, can't remember if I, if there was anyone else worth. But yeah, Shidek is also is also quite exciting. And then, yeah, and so it'll be interesting to see how they all progress. But you know, there's always that player that you never see coming too. That sure um, doesn't get a lot there's of a, hype. That generation, well, generation. They're like two years older than Fields <laughs> and and Vanasha, but that generation of Mayo and Kazo is sort of forgotten. I feel like mm -hmm. at this point, like no no one's really talking about them. But they they can be great as well. Kazo had yeah. that uh, had these couple of great major wins uh, in May uh, against Corda and uh, Manarino, right? Yeah, uh, I think. And and Mayo just had uh, a half a year injury. And is slowly getting back there, but but he can also be a. I'm higher on Kazo. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm higher on Kazo than Maya. I? I can understand that. Yeah. Oh, good backhand! That backhand pass is working today. Indeed. But it it does seem like a. You know, a, a, a conscious idea of Cressy to to go at the back end whenever he's approaching. Yeah, which Is I don't. A good one? I don't know if it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, not sold on it. And this is where he double faulted at forty love. Uh, he made a good pass, and that forty love double fault always worries me. Because now, well, he got this. He went big on this. That could have easily been a double there, too. But anytime a player double faults at 40 live, I'm like, uh oh, I really <laughs> Yeah, but th there is a saying, right? That there is no better uh, time to double fault or something like that. That's true. But sometimes I feel like players get too relaxed, like up. Uh, yeah, they just you go for it. Mm -hmm. The next thing they know, it's deuce, and they wish they didn't. Ooh. That was out. But again, going to that backhand was ne not necessarily a good idea. Yeah, because that that was a nice, you know, it was, it didn't, he didn't make it, but it was the right intent there for Mate mm -hmm. and almost in it. This is big. This is a big second. <laughs> it was a big second you <laughs> kind of predicted that i mean a, nothing cressy can really do there i it's just a great serve i bet cressy wishes that first was in It's this, what we've been Again. saying. Yeah. yeah. Again, cheap and charging to the to the backhand, and it doesn't really work. Why doesn't he at least try the forehand? Like you said, he has that wind-up that can make it uh, mm -hmm. tough. That, that one forehand pass where Otto just, you know, didn't, or the wind-up really hampered him, it was actually not also, not really dictate, uh, you know, directed at his forehand either. It was in the middle. Mm -hmm. He just chose to play it from the forehand. That 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 very deep chip and charge. That that very floaty slice. I don't know if you remember that, but but it was also not really at for, at his forehand. He just chose it. So yeah, maybe maybe he should try it sometime. Because <laughs> once you get into the rallies on carpet, like the pressure's up because you might not see another. You, you might not get another ball in play for a while, as we see Ate just puts in a couple of huge serves. You have your decision making has to be sound. Yeah, forty six percent on first serve for Alta still, but the depth of these second serves is saving him. And even with that crazy depth, he still has only three double faults. Yeah, it, it's you know it's surprising that he's only won fifty four percent with the death on the second that he's got it. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was still before. I, I think it was before we started recording, but we mentioned, uh, or you mentioned the over unders on aces and double folds in that match, possibly. Uh, just what we would guess they, uh, you know, they they were. And you mentioned over under thirty five on aces, which is thirty three at some point at, at this point. Mm -hmm. So we're it's gonna be over, that's for sure. And you mentioned fifteen on double folds, and it's nine. So that's you know probably under. See. Probably under, but then again, if if, if it's the second or third set tie break and they they both have some mental yeah. issues, then, then then it could still be over. But the aces are almost certainly going to to be over thirty five. Yeah. All right, this is the first time the pressure is starting to ramp up. Um, let's see what Cressy does. It's a decent lob there. His lob game has not been terrible. Sure. And it's very hard to lob Maxim Cressy. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how tall he actually is. Okay, almost two meters, yeah. And his smash is really good too. Um, yeah, so far in this match, very clean. Like there was nothing. Every that was out probably. Every single it, smash, really. I mean, they Otto called that in. Wow. <laughs> Otto doesn't agree, but I don't know. I'm gonna rewind it a, a, a bit and see. But it was right in front of the umpire too. Um, it looked clearly long to me. I mean, I would have if again if I were playing, I'd call it in. But it looked like I'm ninety percent sure that was long. Yeah, from the stream, it looks long, uh, definitely, I guess. Uh, and I forgot what I was talking about, but it probably wasn't anything important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very, very good. Have volley there. Um, no, I, I, I don't remember. But yeah, the, the, their author was probably... but. The, at least we know that it's not any you know national favoritism because it's not the it's not the German player that, that was helped by the offline call, but oh it yeah goes both ways. Oh yeah. After uh not too long ago, I was someone basically accused me of hooking when we were playing tennis. And after that, you know, which obviously I wasn't. Um and after that, I said, I'm never going to question, you know, you hear all the time, you know, occasionally about, uh, you know, umpire, player questioning mm -hmm. umpires and integrity and that type of thing. Um, and after that happened to me, I'm like, OK, I'm never going to even entertain those type of conversations anymore because it's. it's yeah, hard. I mean, if you're playing without umpires, you just, you know, you're, you call your own lines. And if, if the opponent thinks otherwise, then you kind of. Yeah, you're kind of left without options. It's not perfect, but I mean, there's that famous story where Jeff Tarango, right, uh, mm -hmm. che cheated on Andre Agassi uh, when they were juniors. But I mean, let, look where it got Agassi and look where it got Tarango. <laughs> I, <laughs> obviously, that's not always going to happen like that, but it's it was a moral victory for I guess. Let's see. You hear it in juniors a lot, though. Oh, you know this mm -hmm. one's back on the line. Sorry, oh, what a serve! Yeah, it, it's a bit. You know, it makes me sad because with juniors, you know, then they're pretty much shaped by their parents, coaches. So even if an idea like that appears uh, in, in in the child, you can always you know kind of steer him the other way. And in, in most cases, if, if, if a junior does that, probably the parents told him to. Right. Yeah. Um, I didn't play juniors tennis, but it seemed, it definitely seemed like a level of intensity and there's a certain level of individual, like a, you're not getting that team aspect, which I think is important to uh, a lot of like uh, character, like a lot of uh, growth is came, at least for me, I think for many others, when you're on that team when, in those years. Uh, 
having teammates being, you know, responsible, not, you know, not all about you. Um, whereas a lot of, I think these junior parents have this very individualism sense. And another amazing backhand pass. Yeah. Stop approaching to his backhand. We got to, we got to uh, submit applications to be uh Cressy's coach, right? <laughs> we, sure. Cause it's, it's aggravating to watch uh, him keep doing it and it keep failing. Yeah, so it's officially over on the aces. Uh, double faults, we're going to see. Double faults is looking like the under. Yeah, definitely. Still 90% of points on first serve one for Ote. 35 out of 39. But the, 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 the percentage uh, of, of his first serve is not really improving. 48%. I think it's slightly better in this set, but it's just, yeah, just 56%. So still a little bit less than ideal, but getting better. It'll be interesting who's landing. Because really, it's going to come, if, if this gets to a tie break, which Cressy could double fall his way out of the tournament in five minutes coming up. But if we get to a tie break, it'll be interesting who's land because I think it'll come down to the winner of this match will be who lands the most first serves in the tie break. Yeah, I, who who lands most of them without actually taking you know any speed off or any precision off. Yeah. I don't think either of them are gonna play it safe. So. Probably not. And then they shouldn't. I mean that they, they both have such such game sense will their needs to go for this. You can play it safe when, when the serve is not, not the most important asset of your game or if it's not carpet. <laughs> but... Oh, that was a close one. Probably in. Yeah. From where, from where I sit. <laughs> you can see now why being a line umpire is not the, you know, you don't get any praise when you do well, but player, you know, when you don't do well and players are throwing their hands up, you know, it's not easy. It's not a, it's a thankless job. Definitely. And then there's not much recognition as well. Like, you know, tennis fans know umpires, but line umpires, like the, the most famous one is probably the one that Serena wanted to kill. Yeah. And now the one that uh, Djokovic hit. In ah, the yes, obviously. Yeah. But you still don't know them by name. You, no. you just know how they look. And that, that's, that's all. He approached the back end. That time he got enough depth on it that it didn't matter. Yeah, that it didn't really matter. The, 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 the middle, you know, it was it was just deep in the middle. And as Otto was running from his forehand to his back in the corner, it was it was definitely good enough. Do you like the idea of hitting them down the middle so that Ate, for instance, wouldn't have like the angle there? Is that oh sure, part? yeah. That, that I think that's very important when you're a serving volleyer. Not always, obviously, but if uh, the middle is a very tough spot to hit uh, a pass or or just any shot from, honestly. It's it's even, you know, for, for me, it's very natural because I, I played, and to an extent, I still play a lot of table tennis, and there the middle is even more oh, really? important. Yeah, because there's, like, no, not much, you know, not much spot for, not, not much place for you to... You know, to roam with your body. I love ping pong. Yeah, it, it's the hitting through the middle is such an important tactic there, and it's so hard to get uh, a good block or a good ball back from the middle. So, so that's very natural for me that that you should aim at the middle. Probably less important in tennis, but like here when Otto was running from one corner to another, then. It's... Hey, if we if we ever meet up in person, we'll have to play a game of uh, ping pong. Sure. You Let's play both, green, green. both tennis and table tennis. <laughs> I'm assuming that you'll beat me at tennis and, and I will Oh, I don't know table about tennis, that. But no, I, I'm really bad. You haven't seen my uh you haven't seen my uh serve. Okay. No, I, I I'm definitely interested. But, you know, it's gonna be hard for us to for us to meet, but hopefully one day. There's quite a bit of kilometers between us. <laughs> 
All right, there's the double to start the game. Great, great idea going behind him there. So we're up to 11 double faults now for them combined. Okay, so it's still possible. That was, I think, out. Yeah. Got to put that return and play there if you're crassy. Well, I mean, cheap and charging is so tough. And do you actually try that uh, when you when you play or when I play? Yeah. Do I chip it? No, I avoid the net like the plague. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I want to play a lot at the net, so I do sometimes, but you know, the effects are. Is that oh, that was in. Wow, now they're just nailing that back line on the serve. This time the forehand passed, but I mean, the return was simply weak enough. So you know, it would have been, uh, it would have been in from both wings probably. Yeah, it was a great serve. Which I mean, I can't even fault pressing on that return just because the second serve sure. is so deep. Yeah, and it's, it, the depth on these second serves is probably even more important than on the first ones because on the first ones you. At least in, in the case of Ota, who actually has a different second serve, in the first ones, you actually have the power to stop Cressy from hitting a big return. And here you kind of have to rely on the placement. And obviously, Cressy wants to be as aggressive as possible. So he goes further in the court. Yeah. And if it's on the back end of the service line, like for the majority of this match, then, it's, then it gets really tough. Yeah. So we might not have had the most compelling tennis to do this first stream, but it's close. And we're, we're probably getting a final set tie break. Yeah, at least the drama is there. And it, it gave us the uh, the chance to talk about many different things, which we probably <laughs> wouldn't have covered if, if the match was, you know, more interesting tactically or stylistically. Yeah, the extent of the tactics have been go to the forehand on the grassy, go to the forehand. Yeah, and try to <laughs> try to stay aggressive on the second serves, I guess, because uh, we I think we both agreed that it, it wouldn't really be in their uh, you know, in, 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 it wouldn't really be beneficial for them to to slow down these second serves. Maybe very close to the finish, but not really at this point. Now that's an important game for Cressy. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge understatement. <laughs> That was why, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll see if he's nervous, Cressy. If he doubles here, let's see. Oh, jeez. That takes some guts. I, I, I definitely wouldn't be able to, to just hit it like my first one. Jesus. And there we go. Oh, surprise, surprise. End of the set. There's a double. Yeah, and, and Cressy so far, he's literally been troubled in just one service game. And that was the one at 5-6 in the in the first yeah. set. One break point, a double fault. I wonder if that's on his mind. If it was the first match where it happened, probably not. But since it's been... You know, a recurring theme in his career, probably. Good return. Oh, what a volley. Yeah. Has to consider himself lucky there. Although, once again, I feel like Otto just kind of struggles to play these sort of short balls with the forehand. Yeah, he maybe telegraphed that a little bit. 
That's a good return now, for sure. Oh, definitely, yeah. He should have won the point. <laughs> if tennis was uh, fair, then he would have won the point. And that probably determined the service game, because now Ace, and it's, all of a sudden, you know, he yeah. had a great chance for 15-30, now it's 40-15. Even if Cressy blasted this ace as well, it would have been 30-30, which is a, such a massive difference here. Cressy is going to go absolutely huge on this thing. <laughs> Another double. That was fairly close, but but yeah, he did he did go, he did go for it naturally. That's thirteen doubles. No, nah, it's gonna be close. Hey, uh, hey Vegas, uh, you want to hire me for <laughs> challenger double boats? <laughs> yeah, but uh, for aces, uh, oh, 40, 41, so very fairly close as well. Ah, uh, that I should have done it higher. Oh man, what a serve! All yeah. right, buckle oh, up. That, that was the twenty fifth ace, actually. So the I I have the stats on the ATP website open, and despite even you know it was still forty thirty on the scoreboard on that page, but in the stats there was already the tw Cressy's twenty fifth ace. Huh. I don't know how that works. That was in yeah. Oh, and that's all the yeah, 17 phase. Yeah. Again, like we said before, landing those first serves in the tie break is going to determine that was a first serve perfect night right on the line. Because with as much as these guys double, you really don't want to play that roulette on the second serve. And here we go. Interested, I, I'd be interested to know if he took down, uh, you know, a bit from that second serve because it seemed to be a bit uh, conventionally placed compared to mm -hmm. what he usually goes for. Obviously, still, still absolutely huge, still gave him a, a great, uh, a, an easy put away fully. But that, that's the sort of thing that we're not really going to know without the speed gun or without being there because in person you kind of know whether. Whether the serve was huge or not on the stream, it, it gets a little bit more two two dimensional. Yeah, there we go. He big moment. He approaches the backhand again, and look what happens. I mean, <laughs> and now it's Alta who seems to have a more better read on on Cressy's serve. Actually, a couple of great returns in the in the past few games. Few games, maybe not, but the the game at five six and and now, I just think Cressy's getting a little too predictable. That could be the match. Great drop shot. Yeah, Ota is certainly not getting too predictable. <laughs> no, Ota <laughs> like Yeah, the, I mean, yeah, I, I, I know you mentioned that about Cressy, but but Ota, I mean, that was like the second drop shot of the match or something like that. Risky. I mean... Yeah. And that was perfectly right on the line, too. Don't know whether to praise him or say, why do you take that unnecessary risk? But, I mean, it hey, it's always crazy until it doesn't work. Then you say, oh, you're so stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do we know? Yep. I mean, just, you know, it's, it's not. It's, yeah, I mean, it had to happen. Yeah. 
I don't even know what to say anymore because it's just, you know, it's every, it seems like it's any time a match is close in a big moment, he's going to double fall. Yeah, yesterday Otter came back from 2-5 in the deciding tie break. Today he has a 5-1 lead. I don't it's see gonna be really hard. Back. Yeah. How do you do that? Especially when your serve is, you know, as you said, a bit of a roulette. He has Vegas at home. Okay. The he roulette. Has 20, now. He has 26 aces, but ultimately, does it matter if he's double faulting in the biggest moments? Yeah, it's 10 double faults, which honestly isn't that much when he's serving like that. But it, it's when these double faults came. Yeah. That, that that was the important part, not the, the actual number of them. Very lucky there, the net cord. And yep. He should and again, have gotten burned for again approaching to the backhand. Exactly. Yeah. That was a good pass for Monte. Yeah, if he, if it wasn't for the net court, he probably would have won the point. Yeah. It's like, come on. Maybe it's what the he and his coach you know, established before the match, but um, I guess he should have made an adjustment midway. Wow. Oh, are we gonna see the opposite of <laughs> okay. yesterday? We have a match. Cool. Yeah, but they're definitely reading each other's serves better at this point. Obviously, sometimes you cannot really do anything anyway. But in the, in the tiebreak, we've already had like four or five quality returns. Do you think... I think it's 50-50 whether we get a double fault in the next two service points from Cressy. From okay. Um, yeah, I can get behind that. <laughs> it's, it's very possible. Maybe like a 25. That looked, that looked like a tight first serve. Oh, boy, here we go. Is it like a 25% of on each point, yeah, because he a 50-50 order hits the first one and then a 50-50 order hits the second yep. one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean... It's come on. It's like <laughs> I think that might have pushed the double faults over. Uh, I don't know. Yes, I think it's fifteen at this point. Yeah, so it's still under actually, or depending on whether you had fifteen and a half or fourteen and a half. Uh, but you can't in a tiebreak against a player serving like I take double fault twice and expect twice. To win. Yeah. Now it's like great volley there, but you blew it. Yep, that's the match. Congratulations, yep. Ate. Kind of a longish rally to finish it off, but the two double faults once again making the difference. So there were, I would say, there were practically like two very important games in this match that Cressy lost the tie yeah. break and the 5 6. And both of them he lost because of his serve faltering again. It's it's like it's almost like uh, we're on repeat, right? Uh, like mm -hmm. everything that we thought was going to happen in the big moments happened. Um, you know, as if I watched that Schwartzman match at the was again. Uh, yeah, so Maxim Cressy, oh, Oscar Otto obviously advances to the to the semis to play Lukas Lachko, Quinto, and this. I guess we can before we get taken off, we can we can also talk for a moment about the the rest of the challengers happening this week. 
Yeah. Uh, what are your expectations for Brest semifinals, which actually Jean-Vier and Souza are in the first set already? I think Nakashima wins the title with ease. What do you think? Yeah. Hard to really you know, predict otherwise. He's a huge favorite against Miller and will be a huge favorite against both Jean-Vier and Souza. Honestly, not too excited for these matches even. Like it just seems like such an easy cleanup for Brandon. I think when we look at look back at this tournament, if he indeed if he indeed goes to on to win it, then we're gonna look at the Luxon and match as the most important one. But yeah. frankly, I I have my doubts as to whether Laksonen really wanted to win that match. Not calling him a fixer or anything. No, no, definitely not that. But he's playing Paris is, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. And there were some wild unforced errors from the forehand. Like maybe, maybe it wasn't a conscious effort to to tank it. But maybe when once he, you know, once he was down the break, once he was down the set, maybe that sort of was on his mind that okay, it's okay if I lose this. I still have something right. else to play for. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's a real thing in tennis. Um, so, I mean, I definitely can see that. Laxanen has been serving really well, um, hitting his spots well, and he has been playing really good from the baseline, too. So that was a really good win for Brandon if Laxanen was... I agree. But Laxanen, uh, he, Nak- Nakashima mm-hmm. had already beaten Laxanen a week or two ago, too. So it's not like the reason yes. he won is because uh, yeah. Antwerp, right? But but the, yeah, just looking at the match, maybe maybe I saw it this way because I was sort of expecting it. Like I I had this, you know, ever since I started watching, I had this idea in, at the back of my mind that maybe Laksonen is going to prioritize Paris qualies. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, but but anyhow, it it does look like a very easy cleanup for Nakashima. Yeah. Um... Let's see. Las Vegas, do you have a projected winner there? Oh, Jesus. That's hard. (laughs) Wolf over Mo is, I guess, one that most people would go for. And I I definitely second that. I'm a big JJ fan. Uh, But then Kozlov Kovacevic, I just... I know. Kozlov is... Uh, I t- we talked about it on, on Wednesday with Alex, right? That that's, he, he asked if Kozlov reaches the finals, is he back? And he yeah. had a fairly easy road here, but then again, eight match points against Aiden McHugh. And that, yeah. that was a, a monumental win. And I, I don't know. I mean, for Las Vegas, I just kind of want to roll back and enjoy it, honestly. Both both mm-hmm. semis look very tasty. Kozlov, Kovacevic especially. Yeah. Uh, I've been a big fan of both guys. How about you? Lima. Uh, How about you in in Las Vegas? Oh, for Las Vegas, I'm going to say regardless who wins Kozlov Kovacevic, I'm going to give it to J.J. Wolf. I believe Kozlov beat J.J. Wolf uh, indoors in maybe Columbus. Was that, is that right? A couple few weeks ago? Uh, Kozlov Wolf, yes. Columbus, yes. Um, but I think Wolf gets him, gets him or Kovacevic this time. Kovacevic is improving. His backhand looks better. Um, I just think Wolf's the best player left. Yep. I, I would second that, although I, I don't know. Uh, Kozov and Kovacevic also always look very dangerous. And for Lima, uh, what do we have here? Oh, there's there's one very tasty semifinal again. Mm-hmm. Are you talking? Are you Probably not the Nico Jari match. Huh? Jari no, Jari. no, I'm talking yeah. about Varias Serendol, definitely. Yeah, I actually lean Varias in that one. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you why. I think that, well, first, I think that Varias's backhand is much better than it used to be. I think his forehand's obviously a huge weapon. Sarandolo put, had to play nearly three hours yesterday. Not that that bothers him that much, but it was a phys- another physical clay match. He hasn't looked his best. He didn't look his best yesterday. Um, he didn't look his best against Galarno um, in the match before. It's going to be so hard for Brias to hit through him, but I something tells me Brias wins. Um, what do you think? 
Uh, honestly, I could say the, the, the very same things. I even peaked Varias uh, on the Crack Rackets Challenger pod at the beginning of the week to, to take the title. Obviously, back then we didn't have this much info, but I just feel like Varias has been playing a bit better than his results in the in these South American tours have uh, suggested, even though obviously this has, he's been fantastic. It was like, what, a quarter there, a quarter there, mm-hmm. a final, a title in, in Santiago, a final in Ambato. Right. Uh, but but yeah, Serendolo has played a lot recently, and the the fitness uh, has been an issue. Uh, th- there was that uh, injury that he got against Hugo Carabelli, then then which, well, and then he lost to Kikar winning one game. The when he had to play two matches in in one day in Buenos Aires, he was completely you know, his legs went out in the in the ladder match. So mm-hmm. uh, from a fitness standpoint, and it's going to be very important in this match. Uh, Varias is is a favorite to me as well, and I agree on the on the on the Varias back, and he pretty much now has two two quality shots, and it, it's. In the past, it used to be one. And right. Cop- Copriva, Jari, uh, just, I don't know. Nico Jari is, is, to me, playing very well and should be uh, should be rising up the ranks in the in the near future. Copriva, I don't think I've watched him this week. And ever Finally, since Kstad, he's, he's been... Exactly. Ever since Kstad, he's been quite awful. So so I'm, uh, I just, I'm not sure what to think about him since I don't think I've watched him yet this week. The, the thing about Yari is his serve is one of the best on the Challenger Tour um, by far. Um, sure. And his return is pretty bad, pretty damn bad. Um, and so you really just, it comes down to, you know, close sets. And he played a, ch- a tie break against Tabilo, a tie break against Rodriguez, 7-5 uh, in the first set against Puertas del Pino. Um, and so it's, it's going to come down to a few points here and there. I trust. I don't trust Capriva to serve well enough to win. Um, and so I, I'll go with Gary there. But I think that the winner of Varias on Surendola wins the title. Yeah, that's very understandable and probably how, how I see it as well. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's where we're going to finish at now. Uh, thanks for, for being here. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, it was fun. Well, thanks so the much. Match, yeah, the, 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 the match was fun for us. The, the talking was fun for us. Hopefully it was a fun experience for you as well. Thanks, John, for being active in the, in the comments, if you're still here with us. And uh, yeah, we'll see if there, there's going to be more of, of such things where we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about how it went and all. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you all so much. And I, it's good. Hey, it's great uh, doing this with you, Damien. Yeah, it was a lot of fun for me as well. Uh, good to, it was a good talk. Uh, I don't know how we actually finished the live stream. Do we just leave the Zoom? <laughs> um, I think so. That's something we, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe, let's just leave them, I guess. Okay. Bye, y'all.